everyone, Sarah here. As you listen to our episodes recorded during the 2020 global pandemic, just a friendly reminder to check the date stamp on when that episode was released. And we'll also always tell you when it was recorded as well in the show notes and in the episode itself. Things change so quickly these days, including recommendations for health and safety, as well as just our own thoughts and feelings. So you may hear things that feel a bit dated if you're catching up on older episodes. Just know that we're experiencing this in real time, just like you, and that we're working really hard to follow the latest recommendations for the safety of our families and our communities. We're also working hard to bring you timely, relevant podcast episodes in a world that's changing really quickly. So just a reminder to listen with that context. Thanks for being here, friends. On to the episode. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Megan. We're two moms with eight kids between us, from little to grown. We're in different areas of the country and in different stages of life. But we both know that motherhood's a lot easier when real moms share tips and encouragement. And remind you that it's really all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 253 of the Mom Hour. I am Megan Francis here, as always, with Sarah Powers. Hey, Sarah, how are you doing? I am hanging in there. How are you, hanging Megan? Hanging in there. <laughs> I'm kind of about the same. And I think um, a lot of us are in the same boat. So that's kind of what we're doing in this episode is we're offering up some really specific self-care strategies for stressful seasons. And I that was a lot of S's. And I think we could all agree that we're in a stressful season right now. I think so. Yes. What I think is so unique about this particular stressful season is that we're literally all in it together at the same time, which Mm -hmm. is kind of unprecedented. And I think is an amazing opportunity because so often when you're in a season of life where everything is falling apart or you're just really stressed out, like you might not know if anyone else feels the same way Mm -hmm. or the timing might like everybody else's lives are just going along seemingly, you know, wonderful. And, um, and everything seems normal for everybody else. But right now we know nothing is normal for anyone. So it's like, it just, it gives us the opportunity to kind of pull back the curtain on our own quirks and our own lives and how we're dealing with all this upheaval. Um, and, and yeah. Yeah. I, one thing I've noticed is it, you end up skipping small talk when you, if you see a yes. neighbor across the street or you're catching up with a friend, you can skip all of the small talk because everyone knows exactly what each person individual's life experiences like right now. Yeah. I mean, you don't know it at, at a deep detailed level, but um, it has evened the experience playing field in a really unprecedented way, I think. It really has. And I think it also kind of highlights how differently people react to things like this, because we're all reacting to like, we're all reacting to the same crisis, but of course we all react in, in different ways. So maybe we should start there. Like, why don't we talk about what we notice about ourselves? Like, what are our triggers? How have we been reacting? Um, what are the things that we maybe try to head off at the past? Do you want to go first? Yeah, yeah, I definitely will. Um, so we've been in this, my family's been really in, I don't know, isolation, quarantine, lockdown for about a week, other than grocery store and like walks outside. Um, just That's just for the context. Yeah. So I've had about a week um, to observe myself and just my own response. So a few things that I've noticed, I am sleepier than normal at night. And that's saying something because I already go to bed early. I often fall asleep watching a television program on the couch, but I feel like it's earlier than normal, even though I'm getting good nighttime sleep. And I really have been sleeping well at night um, and waking up at a normal time. But I, I think it's just a little bit of the sustained emotional stress and lack of activity. And, you know, I am going for walks and it's not I'm not in like being a couch potato, but um, you know how you're more tired when you're doing less yes. sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's something I've noticed. And I don't love it. I've talked on the show before how I don't love the feeling of just passing out on the couch like it does. It's not like a it doesn't feel like a good bookend to the day. But it, so that's just something I've noticed. Um, I definitely have mood dips in the late afternoon. Um, and I shared that with you and I have shared it with my husband. Um, and that's kind of normal for you, but this is probably like super. Yeah. I think what the difference is, is I normally have an energy dip in the afternoon. It's not usually tied to emotions. It's more just right. like I, like, a like I'm tired and kind of, I lack motivation. This has felt like sad and anxious and grumpy mm-hmm. or all three or, or two of the three. Um, so it has felt much more emotional. And and so I've I've had to, you know, manage that and we can get into some strategies later on. Um, I have noticed some anxiety about things unrelated to the current uh, pandemic crisis creeping in, like things that 
are completely unrelated to the current stressful situation that my brain just decides to want to fixate on and catastrophize about. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like, oh, great. So we're in anxiety mode. So let's also think about these five other unrelated things. So that has well, been and it's, interesting. it's almost like right now your brain doesn't have enough data on how, like because it doesn't know what's going to really happen with the yeah. coronavirus. Like it's probably like, OK, I have all this energy to burn. Yeah. What's some real stuff I can dig in on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, and then finally, and I know people can relate and you can relate just really struggling with uh, prioritizing tasks, both at work and at home. It's like It's like when you have a new baby and there's so much you could be doing laundry and sleep and meal prep and and you just you're working in such fits and starts and your your rhythms are so out of whack that you can't use the time that you have on the things that matter. And it's uh, for someone like me who generally doesn't struggle with that, like I generally am very productive and very efficient. It's a weird feeling to not be able to I find myself making like a very short to do list each day because there's a million things I want to do. And, you know, we've we've done yeah. a lot on the mom hour in the last week. We put out a lot of content like it's not that I'm not productive, but it's like I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing at any given moment. Yes. And that's that yep. is hard, especially in a sustained way. It's one <laughs> thing to have one day like that, but when you have right. eight you know, eight. well, and I think that in, in times like this, too, it's really hard to give yourself credit for the stuff you have done. Mm. It's like it's all in this sort of free floating because our schedules are messed up and there's not that maybe the evidence in front of us that something has gotten done. The other day, I actually made a list of like I, I call it the all the things when I'm getting like that, like all mm-hmm. wrapped up. Um, I'll make an all the things list. And it's literally just like all of the things that are in my brain right now. I need yeah. them on paper. And then I was like, oh, these are actually I probably will get through like most of these today without even worrying mm-hmm. about it. But when they're just like floating around and there's so much uncertainty, I totally understand that feeling. I want to I want to hear about yours and what you've noticed, but I just have to put one final thought on that. It's very strange to be working and being productive under the eyes of everyone in my house. So I live Mm. with my husband and three children um, and I'm used to having five or six hours solo during the day to kind of manage my productivity. And then when we come together as a family, I'm generally not working or you know, not as focused, but it's, um, I find that I feel guilty sometimes. Like I'll go upstairs to work for a couple hours and then I'll come down. And if I have to do something else, I feel like I have to justify it. Like, I know I was just up there working (laughs) for two hours, but now I have this other thing I have to do. It's like a weird, like a, like I'm working in a fishbowl or something. Like I have to explain the use of my time. I'm sure that's about me and not about any of my family members who really care, but it's interesting. Well, and it's, I mean, it's not unlike, summer break it's just it's during the summer break like I don't know what we'd we would have just planned for it and seen it we would have seen it coming we would have things planned to uh, occupy everybody and make the days feel like less like more broken up and less kind of just nebulous yeah (laughs) everlasting um okay so what about you yeah so for me like it kind of manifests as like this at loose ends feeling um like I know I should be doing something. I feel like I should be doing something that I haven't even thought of yet. Like there is something happening in the world and I need to respond um, in some way Mm -hmm. that is productive. And, but I don't know what that thing is. And so then I just kind of spin my wheels. Um, I I end up like inventing projects for myself (laughs) and like solutions and things that like, then I'm like, I don't have time for all this stuff or I don't even know if I want to do those things. And so it's like, I'm trying to find the way to plug in and be useful and helpful and also, you know, take advantage of, of I don't want to say opportunities, but definitely like there are a lot of things I could be plugging myself into right now and I don't know what to do. So yeah. then I just don't like I can't get started on anything. Yeah. Um, and then I also feel like I need to check in on all my friends. So that's taken up and we'll talk about this in a little bit. But like that's taken up an enormous amount of my time over the last week is literally just checking in with people. And that feels really good and really connected, but it can also just become another thing to kind of. I don't know, spin your wheels on. It becomes like all day long. I'm texting everybody I know. And so that can start to um, almost compile because you're having the same conversation over and over and over. Like, how weird is this? And then you share some bit of news that you've heard and then you end up sharing it with someone else. So sometimes that can kind of start ramping things up. So wait, and, I'm, I'm going to yeah, go jump ahead. in. What, what yeah. does that feel like to you when you say you feel the need? Because we've talked about Enneagram and you are a two. Yeah. This is a very two behavior. So what does that feel like when you say you feel like you feel the need to check in on all your friends. I think that that was your exact words. Yeah. I just want to, I want everybody I know to know that I'm like there, I think. And I want to know that they're all there. So uh-huh. like, 
there's people I don't talk to hardly at all. And this last week, we've, we've been texting all the time. Like, it's just a very different. And it's, it's like, hey, what's going on with you? You know, mm-hmm. so it's just how's everyone doing? I've got a bunch of different groups I'm in. And, and that's lovely. I think it's been really helpful. Um, but it has been almost like, did I leave someone out? Should I check on my aunt? Right. What about my other aunt? Like, right. then it becomes like this, like laundry list of people that I could literally all day just be calling right. and texting. Right. So um, that in and of itself can become kind of like a, like a spirally kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, I'm not like, I don't have a lot of um, specific anxiety. That's not really a way that my brain works. I don't, I don't get anxious about things that are happening. I tend to get anxious about nothing. Like mm-hmm. I don't even know what it is like that free floating. Yeah doom feeling but you can't pin it to anything and there's and the thing that really stinks about that is you there's also nothing you can do like it's not like okay so I'm anxious about my bank account right what are some things I could do to safeguard my money right now it's not like that it's like I'm just I just feel like there's an elephant on my chest and I don't know why Mm -hmm. um so that happens when I don't take when I don't get in ahead of like self-care stuff that'll start happening and then I've had this really weird itchiness at night. Um, it's happened on and off now for the last, I don't know, year. I think the first time I had, it was like when I went to California last January, I feel like. Okay. Um, when you and I were in Palm Springs together, I think that's when it started. Okay. And it went away like pretty quickly. And, and we were, remember we puzzled over it and you yeah. were like, well, sometimes, you know, it could be an al- allergic thing. And sometimes this just happens. So I think I took some allergy meds. It went away and never came back. And then it came back when I was moving and then it went away and then it came back last week. Where I I'm think up it's at like totally four. a stress it's thing. It's stress. It's, yeah. I wake up in the middle of the night and I have hives all yeah. over my legs. And then sometimes they'll move up to my trunk and sometimes it'll move to my arms. It, it's like completely random. I don't itch at all during the day. I don't itch when I go to bed and I wake up in the middle of the night, like feeling like I could scratch my skin off. Oh. And now that I look back, it's always connected to some stressful yeah. period. And then when the stress resolves, the itching goes away. Yeah. So yeah. So, <laughs> and there are ways, like, I know now that, like, I wear, I, like, what I can wear to bed that helps. I yeah. can't wear anything that's too hot. Like, I just, there's lots of things I can do, but that's such a bummer when yeah. you're waking, when you're laying there scratching from 4 to 6 a.m. Oh, that's terrible. And then suddenly it all goes away, and I'm like, well, I guess I'll just go back to sleep, and I feel totally normal again. It's yeah. very strange. So, yeah, that that's a lot, right? We we just named a lot of, um like, symptoms. Symptoms and, and triggers and things we've yes. noticed, but maybe patting ourselves on the back for knowing these things and being in our 40s and having spent the last five years on a podcast that's in part about self-awareness and happiness and motherhood. I think both you and I are, are, we have different self-awareness like areas that come really naturally to us and others that we've had to work on. But Mm -hmm. I guess I want to say good job to us for knowing what our stress triggers are. And then the rest of this episode, we're going to talk about some really specific things that we're doing in the self-care arena to address these things. And I, I feel like I feel kind of uplifted about this conversation because I think anyone listening who is able to, you know, know themselves and and take care of themselves might get some some little ideas or just some general ideas from this. So should Agreed. we take a break? Let's do it. All right. We'll be right back. OK, Sarah, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but do you consider yourself a rebel? I do not know. I am totally a rule <laughs> follower, but I will say I think a lot about raising my kids and especially my girls to question and challenge and push limits in ways that will really allow them to explore whatever dreams they have with confidence. And I'm really excited to welcome back our sponsor, Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, because their podcast is all about sharing stories of women who really did break the mold and went after their ambitions. Yeah, this is so important, I think, to put stories of girls going after all kinds of different career paths, science, sports, medicine, art, activism and politics in front of our kids in a way that's entertaining, but also just makes it seem normal. That's what we're going for, right? Exactly. So every episode of Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls tells the story of one awesome woman, and the stories are also narrated by other super inspiring women. Most of the episodes are around 20 minutes long or even a little less, so it's great for a car ride or a bedtime wind down, and the kids and I really enjoy them. Check out Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls wherever you get your podcasts. We'll link to a couple of episodes we love in the show notes. And you can also just type in Rebel Girls into your favorite podcast player and start listening now. Go check it out. Sarah, you know how we talked about creating positive new habits not too long ago on the show? 
I was just thinking that with all the disruption to our regular lives, that this would be a great opportunity to get more intentional about skincare routines. Oh my gosh, I totally agree. We all need ways to make ourselves feel good right now. And taking good care of your skin can be such a fun and nurturing way to take care of yourself. So we are excited to be partnering with Dermatology. That's D-R-M-T-L-G-Y. So no vowels. And these are medical grade products made with pure, safe, clinically proven ingredients. I love that Dermatology has created a self-care starter kit for our listeners. It's perfect if you're in that place where you really want to establish a new kind of grown-up skincare routine, but you don't know where to start or how to put the products together. There are four full-size products, a cleanser, a serum, a sunscreen, and a retinol complex, and they're all designed to be used together. And Dermatology has marked the package all the way down to $99 with free shipping just for our listeners, which is a fantastic deal especially for these kind of high quality products. Yeah, high quality and also very generous sizes, I will say. So I love that Dermatology has taken all the guesswork out of taking care of our skin by packaging these products together for us and making it really easy to get started. Also, the free shipping and the direct-to-consumer delivery is very nice because none of us are browsing around the beauty stores these days. Right. So again, it's $99 for a cleanser, a sunscreen, an anti-aging serum, and a retinol complex, all of which adds up to $175 normally. And free shipping on top of that. And they've made ordering super easy with a special page just for you. Head to themomhour.com slash skincare and you'll see what we're talking about. Again, themomhour.com slash skincare will take you right to Dermatology's special offer just for our listeners. So check it out. Okay, so when we were preparing our specific self-care strategies that we have to share today, we realized that some of them are really tied to living in a house full of kids and or, you know, managing or leading a house full of people during this stressful time. And the others are truly more individual. So that's kind of how we divided it up. So let's start with the ones that have to do with being a mom of many children. And why don't you go first, Megan? Okay. Um, Well, this is a a drum we've been beating pretty hard. But I just want to say the the first self-care strategy is that I'm not homeschooling. I am definitely not a homeschooler. And that was like a title that I just refused to take on. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think that's what's being asked of us. And to think about right now trying to manage my family's life in that way Um, it just feels untenable to me. I I don't get to just not work now. Neither do any moms who have jobs that are, you know, working from home. Um, or even if you, you know, are home during the day with some kids and then the others are at school and now those kids are home, like your routines and rhythms are really being shaken up. And I just don't think we need to add like teacher to the list of our own kids, teacher to the list of things that we're supposed to be doing right now. So I have made a very, like I'm a facilitator. I'm facilitating the relationship between my kids and their teachers who have been doing an amazing job of keeping in touch and offering activities. And that's my, I'm, I'm mom. I'm yeah. still mom. I don't want to change that, that role. Well, so yeah, <laughs> I love that. And it's a good reminder that very often self-care looks like deciding to opt out of something or yep. uh, set a boundary or just not cave to pressure in some area. Yes. So you, you're not actively doing anything. You are actively not doing something. And that exactly. is a form of self-care. Um, okay. So for me and for our family, it has been really helpful. And you can laugh at me if you want um, to set scheduled touch points throughout the day. And so that has not looked like a schedule at all. In fact, we've had hours at a time of like free floating, do whatever you want. But um. I can sometimes feel like, oh, my gosh, this day is going so slowly. When is the next Mm. thing? When's it going to be over? So for my own self, we've had a few touch points and I'll just go quickly talk about what they were, what they are. Um, We are doing a 9 a.m. standing FaceTime with my sister and my mom and my sister's two little baby and toddler. Um, And one thing that's cool is we taught ourselves to group FaceTime, which I know is not like that's not earth shattering, but I had never done it. We're like, you know, you have more than one person's face popping up. Um. And so my mom will join in or sometimes she won't. But that has been on the calendar. And my kids know that they get to say hi to their cousins. And my sister can, you know, know that she gets to check in. She's she's home with a toddler and a baby, which is kind of like being stuck inside anyway. Yeah. So her life isn't that much different. But it is just like, you know, it's it's different. So that's been one nine o'clock. We and it's on the calendar it pops up like a meeting, which sounds so funny. And often it's like 15 minutes. Um, So there's that. And then when we first tried to figure out how we were going to do like, game like iPad and gaming and screen time for the kids. 
I knew I wanted to give them more than usual, but I also didn't want it to be a free for all. And I also didn't want it to be something that I had to like count everybody's hours and like put it on me. So I just decided that after lunch, it's an hour and a half every single day, which for them is, is more than they usually get. So it feels like, you know, it feels like they scored big time. But I think what what was great about it for us, Brian and I both working from home, is it wasn't like they each get an hour and a half and they get to choose when they are going to do it. Because then it's like somebody's doing it in the morning and then somebody split it up into three 30 minute segments and it just becomes this whole thing. So it's a bear to manage. Yeah, It's like um, it's kind of like toddler nap time, only it's big kids screen time. So we eat lunch, we clean up and then from like 12 to 130 or whenever we're, you know, ready, that's when. And, and they can do whatever they want. They can play the worst, you know, the worst iPad games, watch like the most terrible shows. Like, I don't care. But um, oh, and then we also rotated who gets to choose which device. So they just go by whichever whichever person's day it is to choose because we have a console. We have Apple Arcade, which is like console video games. And we have a couple iPads and they they figure that out. So it has worked really well. And so that's another touch point in our day where I always know that that's going to be happening. And then I'm still going through my day. And then um, I have a cup of coffee every day at two o'clock. And the reason it's at two o'clock is that's usually when I would drive to pick up the kids from school. Right. And I always make my cup of coffee. And it's kind of like it just feels like um, a transition from the school day to the rest of the day. And we don't have that anymore. But I look forward to that two o'clock cup of coffee. And the funny thing is, I don't really want to have it a lot earlier or later because of just when I'm used to my caffeine and all that. So I look forward to that. And I usually make Brian a cup of coffee. So there's two o'clock coffee. And then, you know, by five, we might pour a glass of wine or start dinner. So I guess the point is, oh, and then we've been watching a show before bed. So for the kids and for me, there have been these things where I can look at the clock and I at least know what's what's the next thing that's happening, even if we have these long stretches in between. And it really has been helpful for them and for me. Well, I love that. Although mine sounds like it's contradicting yours. I don't really think it is. So my next one was to not get too caught up in the right time of day yeah. <laughs> for certain activities. <laughs> and I don't think I was thinking of things like, you know, wait, I am still trying to like get up around the same time every day, get moving, um, have, you know, like I, I'm still sticking to like my kind of little routines and rhythms as much sure. as I can. But like I have these weird hangups that like laundry is a nighttime thing. Just for example, like okay. to me, laundry, like folding the laundry has always been something that I not always, but typically is something I do in the evening in front of the TV or in the evening in the kitchen with a glass of wine, listening to music or whatever. I always, I have like different ways I do it, but it's always been an evening thing. And like work has always been a daytime thing. Mm -hmm. That's just an example. Like, and I had to, or the big meal of the day is, has always been dinner. Like Mm -hmm. the big meal we all have together. And I thought, well, that's kind of silly. Like, what if I just want to make a big breakfast and I want to make it at like one, like, so it's more like a brunch, like, And that's the big meal that we all sit down and eat together. That's okay too, because maybe this evening my kids are going to want to like get on um, the Xbox with their friends because that's how they're socializing right now or, you know, whatever it ends up being. And I think that I've kind of just decided for now, and this is going to have to go back to like at some point we have to go back to something Mm -hmm. resembling, depending on how long this drags on, like, but right now it's totally okay to just like upend everything and things will get done when they get done. Yeah. And if they don't get done today, that's okay. Like, I, I don't feel like now because um, we're all home all day, like, I have to, you know, do all these projects all of a sudden I want to, but like, how is my life hasn't changed that much. Right. So, you know, it's not like I suddenly have way more time. It's just the time is way looser. And there's mm-hmm. people around all the time. And you know, what's interesting is that, like, we haven't gained any time, but I will say not having to deal with like the back to school or the morning school pick up and the school drop offs that does build some time back into your day or at least it builds flexibility into your Mm -hmm. day like you and I keep saying like time has no meaning anymore (laughs) um we can like not being able to go out and do stuff does seem to like create this feeling that things of opportunity things can happen whenever yes (laughs) Um, not only that but what one thing I noticed is when when the kids would bring up a project idea or Brian and I would nobody would say something like nah that's gonna take too long like it would be like because we're all just like eight hours like they wanted to build this elaborate like cardboard box maze and nobody parent or kids said no I don't want to do that it's gonna take too long because we have an eight hour project is great Yes. I just, a friend of mine just sent me a video of him on the couch with a remote and his kids made a TV and they sat inside the TV. Like they made a frame (laughs) and it was like a TV and they're sitting inside and he's changing the channel. He's like, 
okay, HGTV. And then they're like, you know, their home and garden network. It's just hilarious. Like we're all finding ways to be idle that yes. I think is not, it's not American. Like we don't yes. know how to be idle yeah. in this yeah. country. So it's just like, we are idle, but we're always looking for like a distraction. Mm-hmm. And like right now, all we've got is like ourselves and the TV's not going to cut it that long. So I think it's actually kind of fun how creative and um, people have gotten like how to use their time. So anyway, that's my second one. Just like right now, I'm just trying to give myself a pass on feeling like things have to look the way they used to. They don't. No, I totally agree. And I think you and I just spoke to two different ways to approach this like endless, you know, endless day with no markers of any time. Um, And it reminded me, we did that bonus episode where I interviewed a couple homeschool moms uh, last week, I guess now. Um, And Amy Sloan talked about loop scheduling in homeschooling as opposed to like block scheduling or I don't know what you would call the alternative, but kind of the same idea. Like you would be doing more of a loop schedule where you you know all the things that need to be done. And once they're all done, you kind of go back to the beginning of the list, but it doesn't have to be tied to a certain time of day. And I'm clinging to my certain times a day for some things right now. So I love it. Okay, so another self-care habit that everybody's heard is good for you is journaling. Um, And I have a hard time just freeform journaling. But I happened to see on Monday, um, Elizabeth from Teaching Sam and Scout. She's a teacher and a blogger. She's been on our show a couple of times. And I follow her on Instagram. And she was talking about, she's a high school teacher. Now she's teaching remotely, of course. And she was encouraging her students to journal through this time, not just because journal is good self-care, journaling is good self-care, but because this is like historic. I mean, we're living through something historic. And your kids and your grandkids someday are going to ask, what was it like when you lived through the 2020 pandemic? Um, And I was like, oh, gosh, I hadn't thought about that yet. That's a really good point. And so going back to tying things to a certain time of day or these anchors in our day, what I decided was that as a family, before we watch The Amazing Race, which is the end of our day, is watching a show together, um, we all get out our journals and we're just doing um, like our highs and lows of the day, kind of like when you go around the dinner table and you say like the best part and the worst part of your day. And we've always done that using a framework called Rose Thorn Bud. So the rose is the best part of your day. The thorn is the hardest part of your day. A bud is something you're looking forward to um, the next day or in the future. And then I added something we're grateful for because this time of year, I mean, this right now, like gratitude is, you know, key. So yeah. everybody writes down those four things. It's not a long form journaling exercise, but Brian and I are doing it too. And we just write like day one, day two. And it's so cute. Like Violet, you know, she does it. And and it's there's been a couple of like very tender moments. Like Reed said one day, he's like, I just I can't think of a thorn the last couple of days. Like he oh. literally couldn't think of a bad thing about the last two days of his life. And the rest of us are like, the world is like falling apart. Right. And but he's, he's like, so sheltered he's so, from that. Yeah, he's so happy. They feel really safe and secure. You know, Violet's like worst thing that happened was she lost her pen and the best thing that happened was she found her pen. You know, it's <laughs> that just is like, I lost my pen, yeah. but I knew it was in the house. Yeah, exactly. That's the beauty it of it. She's anywhere. like, it has to be here somewhere, like literally has yeah. to be. Um, and I so, love that. Yeah. And it's been really good for for me. And I, I won't speak for Brian, but he's doing it, too, for me, because I am not a great long form journaler where I pour mm. my feelings out. This gives me like four things to write down. And when you, when you accumulate that over many weeks, um, we're going to see, we're going to look back and be like, oh my gosh, remember when, you know, and, and, and so we're all doing it together. So that is another self-care practice that we're doing as a family. And I'm just, I'm super glad that I got the idea and implemented it right away. Not that you couldn't start like in the second or third week of this, but it was just coincidence that I saw Elizabeth's post and that I was like, OK, and the kids don't complain because they're about to watch a TV show. So it's tied to, right. you know, something we're about to do anyway together. So I love that. And OK, so what's really funny, um, you know, that I'm a journaler. Yeah. I am a daily long form yeah. journaler. I have hardly journaled any in the mm. last 10 days. I think there's a couple reasons for that. It feels very big. Yes. Like I tend to write about the minutia of mm-hmm. my life, like you know, um, how I feel about like just whatever one little thing is in front of me. And this feels so big that I'm not sure how to turn it into a journal entry for one thing. And um, also I'm doing so much talking about my feelings with other people right now that like, I almost feel like when I get, when I sit, like sometimes uh, my journal feels like a letter to myself Uh and I sit down and I'm like, I got nothing left to say. Like I've said it all. Yeah. So, but at the same time, my, uh, my kids are also, their teachers told them to journal. And I know this is like a historic time. So I think I'm going to really strip it down. I like the fact that you're making it short. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm on, I might actually treat mine like a light housekeeper's log or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, 
<laughs> yeah. Anything. Um, when I was doing my 40 just days. The facts. Yeah. When I was doing my 40 days to 40 walking and I created a little log, I just picked like four things to write down the distance I went, the weather, yes. um, who I was with, and then any nature I saw. And by limiting it to exactly like a lighthouse keeper's log, like by limiting it to data points, it, any one day might not be that interesting. But when you look at the whole thing, it's going to tell a story and it's going to bring yes. back other memories that you could go back and write longer form about later. So, yeah, I love that. And if you've ever read like historic law, I think those are some yes. of the most fascinating things to read, totally. like like a soldier's log or like there's lo- lots of different, you know, a, a ship captain, whatever yeah. you it's like there's always these little moments where it kind of breaks out of the de- of yeah. the just, you know, bought like five bushels of corn or whatever, <laughs> and like, you know, t- like sh- blew out the candles at 9 a- or 9 p.m. It um, and there's like little moments where like silly, weird things happen yes. or they like actually kind of break the wall yes. a little bit and it's fascinating and so like I'm kind of looking at this as like that kind of I love that you know, that I kind of thing totally agree plus now I want to have like an oldie time pen and like write dearest you yes. know, <laughs> dearest aunt <laughs> things are looking rough on the front lines yes yeah. so I I am the the inner historian in me wants to dig into that well I sure. relate a lot to what you said about it feeling big in fact I was a lifelong journaler um and I never had problems with coming up with things to say all the way from like middle school into my early 20s and you know when I stopped cold turkey right mm. after September 11th and I oh think gosh. it was the same reason um yeah and, and then I never got back to it and I that was also the year like I graduated college and then like my life just changed a lot, but I, I remember even at the time thinking, I don't know how to journal anymore. And and that was and, a similar. And place. your like day, your day to day, the stuff you would journal about starts to feel so silly. Exactly. Like, exactly. like all I like get sick of myself, you yeah. know, I'm like, okay, I, geez, I spend a lot of time whining in here about my dating life or whatever yeah. it is. Right. And now I'm like, okay, that's just feels very irrelevant yeah. to what's happening right now. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, I'm starting my log. I'm going to okay. buy a, Ship I think they actually log. have journals you can buy that like, keep it really short on purpose. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a little diary. So, I mean, I think it's like the old school kind of di- daily yes, diary type thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, this is a simple one and this will come as no surprise. Um, I like to take baths, mm-hmm. but what I've been doing is being super intentional about my bath being like, I pick like the, the time when there's just too many people around or things are feeling too stressful and I just want to be alone. And I don't try to time it to like the time of day when I need to get clean. Right. It's not yes. about that. It's not about um, <laughs> it's not like usually I'd be like, okay, well, am I going to wash my hair today? If not, then my bath will just be when I shave my legs and get yeah. clean. Like, like, and I would put that at the time of day that I need to clean up, whether it's because I'm about to start my day or I just worked out. But now it's like the bath is separate from cleanliness. Mm-hmm. That's like a completely different thing. And I'm just hanging. I, I can do it at any time of the day because again, time has no meaning. And that is my time to, that's my introvert time. Yeah. And I am not an introvert, but I do have a need for alone time. Um, and I can see, I can feel when it's coming because I start to get short or like um, not pay attention to the kids when they're talking to mm-hmm. me. I do a lot of that, uh, what, mm-hmm. you know, a lot mm-hmm. of those responses that don't actually make sense. And so then I'm like, oh, I see. Like there's too much, in, like too much stimulus right now. Yeah. Bath time. I so that's it. a nice short it's and sweet like, one. It's, it's like the toddlers too. Like just put them yes. in the bath. Just like put Megan yeah. in the bath. When and she even if you're already grumpy. clean, yeah. even if you're already clean, it's okay to get back in the bath. Yeah. You can read in the bath. Like yeah. you can drink a beverage in the bath. Like there's lots you can do in the bath. And so that's my retreat. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Well, you have one more before we go to break, right? Oh, I do. Yep. And this is just, um, I feel like for me right, right now, I'm trying not to worry myself too much about big projects. And, you know, I just moved a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. So I have lots of things that still need to get done. Like I'm sitting in my living room right now. There is a couple boxes, you know, right across the room of books. I haven't decided where they're going to go yet. There's a lot of that kind of thing, but I'm choosing to prioritize just keeping everything clean and organized and mm-hmm. stay ahead of like the essentials. Mm-hmm. Because as we all know, when kids are around all day, it's very easy for a house to just kind of fall apart, yes. especially if you're not used to that. And so like keeping my kitchen counters wiped down and clean and the laundry and like just the basis, keeping throw blankets and throw pillows off the ground, Mm -hmm. like those little things, my little triggers right now, if my physical environment feels clean and organized, it makes my brain feel organized. And then eventually I'll get to all those other projects. Okay, that's so that's so interesting because one might assume that that also helps me feel self cared for. Yes. But I at least this first week, this past week, I have let go of keeping 
a lot of that kind of general pickup done because the kids will stay busier and self-occupied longer if I let them make giant messes. And I well, mean, right. yes. like spreading out, making a fort and then not cleaning it up for a while because they swear they're still playing with it. And there is a, I can, and I watch Brian too. Uh, you know, both of us have a point where we're like, okay, we're going to do clean this up before we do the next thing. So it's not, I wouldn't say we've let it go a hundred percent, but I have not, I've purposely like turned a blind eye because I have gotten more time for myself and for my work and for my creativity by letting them trash the house for now. Yeah, that's working. No, and that makes sense. I mean, and your kids are that age yeah. too. And I think for me, like I would, if my kids were building, in fact, um, the other day they were building some kind of weird fort out here in the <laughs> living room and I was in the kitchen and I didn't want to, you know, harsh their mellow as people would say, or like, I don't know, no one actually says harsh their mellow. I don't think. <laughs> I think it's like a California thing. Like don't harsh my mellow bra. I feel um, like it's one of those things people think Californians say like Cali, <laughs> which no did. one in California says. Don't harsh my mellow. So <laughs> um, I chose not to harsh their mellow and let them destroy the living room. But that kitchen was amazingly clean. Right. Like I, I just, <laughs> I was like, I found my environment that I had to like manage. And yeah. I thought, I just want these counters clean. I want all the dishes done. Yeah. I want everything, you know, put away. And in this one room, because this is the room that I'm choosing to be in right now. And then later when I moved into the living room, I was like, okay, guys, can we? So I think sometimes it's also about just like, like sequestering yourself uh -huh. in a place that you can manage and controlling and what letting you the rest can and, control and controlling yeah. what you can. Yep. I love that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll focus on the things that are less about family life and more just taking care of ourselves right now. Sarah, our new sponsor, Yippee, could not have come along at a more perfect time. Uh, yes, I agree. Yippee is a new streaming service for kids ages two to 10. And their whole thing is giving parents options for screen time that they can really feel good about. They have animated shows, live action shows, and you can stream on a tablet or on your streaming TV device like your Apple TV or your Roku. The app and all their content is vetted by parents and there are no ads or algorithms. They really want to shift kids content away from that kind of sassy, sarcastic tone that you find in a lot of programming. Oh, my gosh. I'm not sure if it's just a holdover from my mom because she had such a thing for kids being fresh, as she put <laughs> it, on TV shows when I was a kid. But I can't stand that sassy tone either. So this is so needed. So Yippee was actually built on faith-based programming, but it has expanded to include lots of shows that are friendly for any family. You definitely don't have to be Christian to enjoy it. For example, Yippee has the YouTube style shows that kids are just so drawn to these days, like the DIY craft projects and crazy food challenges and that kind of thing. But because they're watching it in the Yippee app, they're not going to accidentally be served up something inappropriate by the algorithm. Yeah, my kids are loving this. I have to share a couple of their favorite Yippee shows. There's one called Jonas Gets a Job, where this nine-year-old kid tries to figure out what he wants to be when he grows up by going into different businesses and talking to people in different careers. It's just really wholesome and funny and cute. And the kid in it is actually great and really adorable. And then there's another one that's perfect for right now, which is one of those YouTube style shows. And it's called Arts and Crafts by Three Sisters. And my kids, I could not pull them away from it this morning. They were learning how to DIY their own sidewalk chalk. Oh, I love it. Well, Yippee wants to make sure parents have good options for screen time during this crazy time in all of our lives. So they're offering 25% off your first three months when you sign up at yippee.tv and use promo code MOMHOUR25. Yippee is spelled Y-I-P-P-E-E -E, and it's yippee.tv, not .com. So again, that's 25% off your first three months when you use promo code MOMHOUR25 at yippee.tv. Megan, do you ever have certain experiences and flavors that just instantly bring childhood back? Oh, so many. And one of those is breakfast cereal. I ate so much cereal as a kid. And I remember I'd read every word on the cereal box as I was wolfing it down. And then when I ran out of interesting content, I'd read the ingredients over and over. And I remember that usually the second or third ingredient listed was sugar. And that was even in some of the cereals my mom considered healthy. Oh, I know. I was shocked when I looked at how much sugar is in some of the cereals that we lived on growing up. And again, the ones that my mom okayed and let into the pantry definitely made me have second thoughts about making them a staple of my kids' diets. Which is too bad, though, because all those fruity and frosty flavors are so fun. And honestly, sometimes I feel like indulging in them again, only like, you know, without all the sugar and simple carbs. That's why we're happy to bring back our sponsor, Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon spent over a year working with the best food scientists and chefs in the world to recreate the taste and texture of classic sugary cereal, but without all the junk that makes them bad for you. Magic Spoon cereals totally mimic the flavors of those old favorites, but with Get this, zero sugar, 12 grams of protein, 
and only three net grams of carbs in each serving. It's really like truly kind of magic. It's hard to choose a favorite, but I love the frosted flavor because it reminds me of the cereal I loved growing up. But again, with zero sugar. You can also try other classic flavors like cocoa, fruity, and blueberry. Plus, there's a variety pack that lets you try them all. And there's no risk to try it. If you don't love Magic Spoon, you'll get your money back with their 100% happiness guarantee. We've got a great deal for you. Go to magicspoon.com slash mom to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code mom at checkout to save $5 off your order. That's magicspoon.com slash mom and use the code mom to get $5 off. All right, we are back and I am going to start with something very fluffy. And that is that I have been making an effort to do either my hair or my makeup every day. And <laughs> that wasn't intentional. Like it's hair day. It's makeup day. It's just that I don't always have the time or energy for both. But if neither is done, if I have not a stitch of makeup on and my hair is frizzy and ugly, I just it's a it's a mood killer when every don't time you feel I, like you want to just go back to bed. Yeah. Like you don't even feel like you're really awake. And then when I get yeah. to that late afternoon mood slump or like any other point in the day where I'm feeling anxious or sad or grumpy, looking bad is just not helpful. So um, we've had many hair discussions on this podcast, uh, but I I do flat iron. If I take 30 minutes and flat iron my whole head of hair well once, it'll last for three or four days. Um, and I can, you know, like take two minutes and run a little curling iron over it or even a ponytail looks then cuter because it's not frizzy. Yeah. Um, and my gray roots are really grown out right now. Um, so I have a spray I can cover them up with. But actually, if I if I flat iron and style my hair, then the grays don't even show as much because they show when it's pulled back into a messy bun. So it's like, a, right. you know, it's a so I've been trying to do my hair not every day, but if I do it once, I can it looks OK for a few days. And then same with makeup, like. I just, I just feel better when I look in the mirror. So, um, I don't know, I, like, it, I, I don't know that any, but everybody would feel the same, but for me, mm. it has been helping. So I love that. Um, I have a little story to share before yeah. I, um, dive into this next one. I had this moment the other day where I had bought what I called not to the kids, but to Jacob, <laughs> he's a, he's an adult kid. I called them apocalypse snacks. So I bought a whole bunch of stuff that like, this is before we knew if the, if the schools were going to be closed or not. Okay. And I was so like, long ago. Yeah, I know. Right. Remember <laughs> back in, oh, <laughs> back in that day. Um, so I was telling Jacob, I was like, okay, I'm going to buy a whole bunch of groceries that are junk and we're going to keep them in the back of the pantry where no one can see them. Because then if we have a day where it's like, it's just a bummer of a day or it's like rainy and we can't get out and we're stuck at home. I can pull out these apocalypse snacks. So he was like, okay, sounds good. So I go in the back of the pantry and all the chips are gone. There's like one, like the, it had been rolled. The bag has been rolled down and there's like, you know, like the two inches of chips at the bottom. Yes. And I come out and I was like, who ate the chips? And Jacob goes, well, the apocalypse is here. You said they were apocalypse snacks. And I was like, no, it's not really here yet. Plus... I get to decide when we eat the apocalypse I snacks. Will you decide when. I will decide when the apocalypse has come, not you. So he was the only one who knew they were there. He was my co-conspirator. And then he went and ate them all. And this was at the same time that Jenna told me the store has a limit on chips. Uh. Like how many chips you can buy. Here's the funny thing. I don't ever eat chips, yeah. like ever. But knowing that I had no chips in my house and like reasonably could not hoard them like there would be no way for me yeah. to amass another stash of chips made me like super anxious yeah. <laughs> for a few minutes so that is leading to my my uh, next um tip or strategy and that is I'm eating super well like 80 percent of the time mm -hmm. and then eating like super crappy like 20 percent of the time <laughs> that's a great ap application so, <laughs> of the 80 20 rule it is I am eating like my meals are Spartan. It's like veg, like roasted vegetables and chicken breast or yeah. like, it's just, I'm eating like clean, really, really clean. But if there is an opportunity to eat a bowl of popcorn with butter on it, I am taking that opportunity. Yep. If there's like a, a chance, like if I have some, I get my hands on some chocolate, um, I am going to eat that chocolate. And I just decided like, this is not the time for me to like really crack down on a diet I'm putting in air quotes mm -hmm. it's a time to take care of myself by putting good fuel in my body but yeah. not to be mad at myself if I also want to put in some junk fuel. garbage some garbage yeah so that's a self-care strategy I think it's actually a really yeah. good one because 
you know that like metabolically and nutritionally, you will be you'll maintain with that 80 percent. And so then the 20 percent is more about emotions and and comfort. And so if the ratio were flipped, you'd probably start to see some physical Symptoms, (laughs) Symptoms, <laughs> problems. <laughs> yes, you're right. But I don't think yeah. you will because you're covered, right? And I would say that yes. that's about that's about my ratio right now too. Um, is eighty twenty, and and my- I'm full. So because I've right. I've filled up on good stuff, I don't eat as much of the crap either. Right. I'm not as tempted to, but right. yeah, I love it. All right. Well, my next one is a continuation of my hair and makeup. We're staying in the beauty (laughs) self-care realm. Hey, it's important. It is. It is. And I have absolutely delighted in not being able to just pick up a random beauty or fashion or skincare item at Target. I'm just not out in the stores anymore. And so I am using and making it making an effort to use everything in my cupboards, like different lotions. Mm. And, you know, we work with some great. That's really fun. I think it's, can't it sometimes also be like, like a surprise? Like you forgot some stuff was in the back of the cabinet. Yeah, totally. And um, we've worked with some great sponsors in a bunch of different, you know, beauty realms. And so um, it's just been really satisfying to use what I have and to tell myself I'm not buying anything new. And, um, and also to treat myself to maybe more, you know, I'm going to put lotion on, I'm using a lot of hand lotion. So there's just more, more beauty stuff out on my counters. And I have enjoyed, like you said, discovering stuff that's been in the back of the cupboard. Um, I don't know if you've read, I know you've read Gretchen Rubin, but she, one of her like thing, you know, she has all these frameworks for people, but um, she says people are either a starter or a finisher um, where they really enjoy the starting or enjoy the finishing of things. And that could be a project or a bottle of shampoo. And I definitely delight in finishing the last of something, like feeling like I, used something used it up. for its purpose. And like, you know, that it's not that I don't have 25 half empty bottles of lotion in my cupboard. So I have been it's felt like self-care because it smells nice and I'm taking care of my skin and all that. But it also has felt like self-care almost in a more inventory management way. Mm-hmm. Like I'm mm-hmm. using what I have and being efficient and frugal in a way. And that has felt really good. So I smell you know very funny nice. about that. I also like the feeling of being efficient and using things up. And like, I, I get satisfaction from that, but I am bummed when I get to the end of anything. Like, oh, you are. I'm sad. Oh, I'm not. I, Even I, if I it's a it. bottle of shampoo that I know I have another bottle of shampoo. Like I, there's like a moment of like, oh, it's over. Yeah. So that's like, <laughs> that is probably like a really small example of some of our hardwired right. Uber differences. Cause I yeah. love it. It's one reason I have a really hard time giving up on books because I Mm. love the satisfaction of finishing a book. Even if I hated the book, I will keep reading it. I know that's a problem trying to break myself of that habit, but I love finishing something. Yeah, that is so funny. (laughs) Well, that's why we make a good team. Yep. (laughs) If it wasn't for me, we'd never start. If it wasn't for you, we'd never finish. That is 100% (laughs) true. I love it. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, it's my turn, right? Yeah. Okay. So... Um, getting outside the days that I have gotten outside, like for an extended period, like a long walk or a mm-hmm. hike, I feel so much better. Like those are the days I'm cheerful and like optimistic and the days that I don't, especially if it drags on several days in a row that I don't, I start to get really like, like a tiger in a cage, like pacing and I start to feel really depressed. And so this time of year, it's tough. Um, in Michigan, it's it the weather is all over the place. It can be very gray and rainy. Some days it's really cold still. Like mm-hmm. it's you know it kind of ranges from like low 30s to mid 40s, but that feels very different on a rainy day than a sunny day. And you know there's and that's a big swing. Like one is almost freezing and the other is um is pushing 50. Right. So it's like that's a big temp- that's a big like what kind of outerwear right. situation. Very different. Um. So for me and we've talked on the show quite a few times about big rocks, Mm -hmm. like the idea that today I have a, my big rock is, um, and I'll just, in case someone hasn't heard this, the idea being, if you have a bunch of big rocks and small rocks and you try to fit them all in a jar and you put the small rocks in first, the big rocks won't fit. Right. But if you put the big rocks in first, all the small rocks will fill in the holes around the, yeah. And then you can put sand and then water. Yes. And sand and water. keeps extending. (laughs) It keeps going. Um, But I have decided that for now, And I did the same thing like last year around this time of the year, actually, that getting outside every day on a nice long walk is my big rock. That might be my only big rock besides the fact that I have to keep up with work. That Mm -hmm. stuff will get done anyway. But like I if I look at my calendar or my um, my weather app and say, okay, between 
it's going to rain maybe all morning, but between one and three, um, there's going to be a period of sunny, you know, sunny skies where it's not going to rain. That is my rock. Like I am going to take advantage of that time and not schedule anything else. And, mm-hmm. and the nice thing about where we are right now is that it, everything feels so flexible that like real life has kind of cr- like ground, ground to a halt yeah. in a way. So it allows for those kind of big rocks that maybe you didn't have room for before. I'm curious when you go outside, do you listen to music or podcasts or anything in your ears or do you do anything else uh, with your brain? I, uh, some, yes, yeah, sometimes. So <clears throat> when I was in the, when I'm in a truly daily walking, you know, three to four miles habit last year, I sometimes would go as far as five. Um, I would mostly have a podcast because that became part of the rhythm of mm-hmm. it. And it was like part of what I looked forward to. And then I will often take the earbuds out for a little while. Like um, there's a certain trail that's got a lot of birds. And so that trail, I'd usually take the earbuds out and just kind of, I don't know, pay attention to what's going on around me. Or when I walk down by the water, I will often pop them out then. But for the most part, if it's just like an exercise walk, yeah, I'm listening to okay. something. Yeah, because I have noticed I also benefit from getting outside, but I have noticed that because there's so many people in my house all the time, I use my walks sometimes for multitasking, like listening to Voxer messages Mm. and then this and it turns into this like it's a little fractured. I think I've talked about this before when I did my walking challenge that. Yeah, it's a definite um, there's a difference in my mental state and that my mental benefit if I walk in silence. But I don't I don't it doesn't mean every walk has to be in silence. I just notice a difference. Yeah. And I drive in silence a lot. Uh, and like, there's a lot, like I, I haven't driven hardly, anywhere in like eight days. I know. <laughs> I next time you car. get in the car, you know, we're all going to spend like no money on gas, but next time you get in the car, like if to go anywhere, just try doing it in silence. It's actually great. I have found that I rarely listen to music in the car anymore. And I used to always have the music, the radio on. Yeah. Um, and I do, I think that it's totally true. Like I lo- I like silence. I really don't need input coming into my brain all the time. I don't think my house is as noisy as yours yeah. um, because my kids are older and they're not here a lot of the time. So like to me, that's it, it's not as necessary because I do get lots of silence in my regular life. Yeah. But I do like to be aware of what's happening outside. Yeah. It's, it's just like different. I don't really like to vox and work when I'm walking. Right. I find it hard to like, you know, like navigate my phone. I usually have my dog. That's the part yeah. I don't like. If I had a long form audiobook or podcast, that would feel very different or a really right. good playlist because then you just put it on and it's, you know, it's yeah. the background to your walk. But it's the it's the yeah. But sometimes it's like I go for a walk and that's when the ideas start. So yeah, anyway, no, just I, curious. I know we've we've both voxed and walked a yes, lot. So we have. Yeah. Um, OK, well, my next one was kind of a happy accident. But um, just before all of this went down. I replaced the bedding on our master bedroom bed and the curtains on our, we have a huge window upstairs. It faces the backyard, which backs up to a hill. So even though we don't have a big backyard, but you see a lot of trees and green when you look out the bedroom window and it's lovely. And the curtains had been falling down. They were from the previous owners. We've been in this house five and a half years and that's how Mm -hmm. long it took me. So this is the warning to you, Megan, who just moved into your house. Like these are the kind of projects that like you think you'll get to. And then right. five and a half years later, what the funny thing is, I thought these curtains must be custom sized because it's a huge, it's, it's a really high ceiling and very wide. And I thought, oh, this woman, I knew a little bit about her and she did a lot of custom things when they remodeled this house. And I thought, how am I going to, I'm going to have to come out and have somebody measure. And like, well, it turns out they're totally a, a standard size. They are, they are like the biggest standard size curtain that you can get on Amazon, but, but they were, I got them on Amazon for like not expensive after five years. Mm. So I replaced okay. the curtains and they're pretty navy blue curtain. And then there's like a sheer scrim like behind it. And then I did white for my bedding. I have not bought new bedding for our like marriage bed. I don't think ever in my life. We've had a couple marriage of... Bed. No, seriously. I think when I don't we know mo- why marriage bed just sounds like hilarious. I, but okay. I think when we moved in together 18, 19 years ago... I brought a comforter, a duvet cover from my, you know, single apartment. Yeah. And then we had a couple of conveniently timed hand-me-downs, like a nice, like a nice comforter cover that was from when my parents moved or something. So I don't think we've ever had like actual bedding um, that that was purchased new for the purpose of this bed. Right. And so I did white and it's really pretty. And so I guess where this ties into self-care is our master bedroom has become the default office, both for me and for Brian, because we don't have a home office. And so if either of us has had conference calls, we take turns using the bedroom. And I've just taken, not only does it make me happy, I sent you a picture because it looks really pretty, um, but I've taken 
care to make the bed every day and keep our room picked up in a way that I normally wouldn't. This room would normally be like the dumping ground. Um, and instead it's kind of like a little haven. So that's been nice. And maybe, maybe the lesson there, I think I talked in last week's episode about you might decide to move furniture around during this time period or use your space differently. So maybe the lesson in there is maybe there's a self-care haven in your house that you could remake just temporarily or, or buy new curtains on Amazon and have it feel like a little haven, even if it's the same old space that you always spend time in. I love that. And plus, Xander looked really cute on the bed. I think one of those throw pillows matched him, maybe. Yeah. It was really cute. It's like an extension. He's a fluffy throw <laughs> yes. pillow. He, look, he looks like a stuffed animal. It's just he does. too much. He does. All right. Well, I just have one more. And this is that, you know, I'm an extrovert and my kids are gone half the week with their dad. And this week, I will admit the day that they went to his house, I had a panic. Like, yeah. holy cow. What am I? Usually what I would do is go find a friend and, and go out somewhere. And that wasn't you know, I wasn't able to do that. And so especially for the last few days since they've been gone, but just in general, I, for the last week have found so many ways to connect with people and I'm really refusing to feel sheepish about that. There are lots of memes going around from introverts, how like, this is, this is like life already. And why can't you people just be alone for five days or whatever? And (laughs) oh, I I don't think you you should feel sheepish at all. No, but like, I have now I have this little group of um, friends in town and we've been doing Zoom calls at night and just for like an hour or less, like some of my jump on for 10 minutes, but it's just like we all just jump on to see faces, you know, and like just and then I've got so many text threads going like so many text threads going. I went to a Zoom birthday party the other night. That was really weird. (laughs) But um, I went to a winery, had like a virtual happy hour yesterday. Like I just had it on the background while I was folding laundry. It wasn't really like I was doing a wine tasting while I was watching, but just like to know their podcasts are great, but you know, those people recorded that they're not live. And just knowing that like you're connecting with real live people when you can't go like all of my routines and the ways that I would socially connect with people have been disrupted. And so knowing that they're still out there, like living their lives and that, you know, we can say funny things to each other and it's just, it's fun. And it has really, really helped. And I've also just noticed how good people can be at like taking care of each other. And that feels really good. Like people who have checked in with me who I haven't heard from in a long time. I've checked in with people who I haven't talked to in a long time. And everyone is just, there's just this feeling of like, everybody wants to connect really badly right now. And I I find it so funny that the thing that the technology that we have been complaining about Mm -hmm. making us kind of antisocial and like disconnected and distracted is now the thing that's making us more social than ever. And it's, kind of cool actually I I get a little kick out of it so it's really cool and I I've loved seeing you like do all of that because I do feel like you've been more motivated to do these things but actually my final little strategy is really the same it has to do with connection um and maybe the ways I've been doing it are a little bit different but um it, you've heard us talk about Voxer I'm sure if you're not familiar Voxer is basically like voicemail technology made into like back and forth audio messages that you can listen to anytime with a friend or a group of friends. Um, And Megan, you and I've used it for work for years, but I also have a small group boxer with two of my best friends from high school. And we've had it for, I don't know, a year maybe, but man, have we leaned in hard on it the last week or so long messages. Um, One of the only times I've like broke down in tears was leaving a Voxer message for those girls. Like I, you know, something that felt came up as emotional that I didn't even realize I needed to just break down about. I was on a walk. Um, So Voxer has been great. You know, group texts with my neighbors have been great. My family has done more group texting. Um, I I realized at some point that I see so many funny memes because of my extended family (laughs) and even in my real life friends, not like you and our online friends, but I'm the most like digital. I, I I spend the most time on social media. So I see all the funny memes and the funny videos and I forget that not everybody does. Right. Um, and so I've made a point to start sending some of the really funny memes to the group text that includes like my sister, my brother-in-law, my brother, my parents. And they just like they cracked up. Like there were some that I saw so many times. I thought you guys have got to have seen this. Did you see the one right. Megan, about like 
if you're suddenly working from home with your spouse, you should invent an imaginary coworker to blame things yes. on. Like, yes. So yep. funny. Like Gloria keeps leaving her empty water cups everywhere. <laughs> we don't know what to do with it. So like things like that, I've just made a point of sending those funny memes to people who I know aren't spending their day on Facebook and they're probably not seeing them. That's been really fun. Um, I downloaded the Marco Polo app last night. I have not done anything okay. with it, but I know that's another place where families and groups um, share messages. And so, yeah, I am also leaning in on technology and group technology for connection. And it does feel like self-care. So, well, and I think it's so funny when you just mentioned Marco Polo, I have downloaded Marco Polo two or three, three, four times over the last year. And I've usually gotten off of it because people tend to leave really long messages. And because it's um, video, I feel like I have to look at it the whole time. Like it's not like a, Voxer, where I often will just put my phone down on the counter and yeah. then go about my business. Um, and you still totally could. So I honestly had this feeling like I don't have time for this app. I, I don't have time to sit here and watch people talk into their camera or into their phone. And now I wonder if I'll feel like I have time for it again. Like the, the our concept of what we have the time and patience for. Yeah. When that's the way we're going to connect with people may change. So, yeah. And I was yeah. also thinking about now I, I know about Marco Polo, but I have not used it because I literally just downloaded it. And I thought I'd wait and see who, who I discover that's on there and whether it ends up being a thing. I don't know. But I also thought of the kids. Um, I know my sister uses it with like her in-laws and the kids will send each other little messages through their mom's phones, like kids who don't have their own phones yet. Um, or like, look at this Lego thing I built or, you know, so I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, using I'm keeping open to it as another possibility, especially because it has a lot of parallels to Voxer, but with video. So yeah, I'm on it. I'm on the Marco Polo. Right. I will report. Well, maybe back. you and I will switch to Marco Polo. I don't think so. <laughs> but only on days when you have your makeup done. I right? know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, can we finish really quickly with any self care habits that we haven't started that we would like to and I can go first. I just have one quick one. Um, I need a good book to read, a good novel, a good escapist, like probably something different from what I normally would read. I'm bummed that I can't go to the library because I do prefer a physical book, but I'm fine reading it digitally. Like that's fine. If it's a a series or something like even bigger or longer, even better. So I've said that the last like over the last week that that's like a a little bit of a missing piece for me. Um, and, And by the same token, I would love a long form podcast too, like something you know, one of those, I don't know, one of the ones we've gotten into where it's like investigative yeah. journal, like a long form yes. one. So either one book or listening, I need something to sink my teeth into that's not related to the current pandemic. Have you read any Ken Follett's books? You know, I think I have years ago, either that or it's just he's just so familiar to me. So it's like the Century Trilogy and the uh, oh my gosh, why did I just forget the other one? Because I once the Century Trilogy, I think that takes us up through like Obama's presidency okay. and the other one is the blah, blah it's like I'm reading it and I just totally okay. um blanked on it but they're like they're these like sweeping historical fiction books they take you through like it's one of those where it takes you from one period of time to the next to the next but there's lots of different families yeah. and different situations and they're all somehow connected yeah. and I read one of them not in the century trilogy but the other trilogy loved it but it was very thick it took me a long time to get through it and I haven't been able to find the time to read the next two one like the next two books Mm -hmm. they're downloaded I have them so this might be a good time to jump into that and people do love them there's lots of you know books like that yes um, I know I I just need to I've talked about on the show before I overthink book selection to no end like I just especially with fiction nonfiction I'm like oh I want to learn about that or I I know that's interesting to me that's not hard but fiction I don't know why I just need someone to like put a book in front of me and I'll start and I'll probably like it once I yeah. once I'm into it I'm not picky it's the selection that is hard for me so anyway yeah. so what about you is there anything you want to start so my yoga studio is doing um audio classes and they're going to start doing streaming classes and I need this in my life mm-hmm. and there's no reason I have a nice big bedroom I have a mat I have all the props I actually think I may order more props and like set them up in some place in my bedroom where they're like kind of semi-permanent yeah as a visual reminder. And the really cool thing is about doing like a hard yoga class at home is you might be able to try a class or any kind of fitness class. Like you could do something that you usually would maybe wimp out on because Mm -hmm. no one can see you. (laughs) So if you wimp out and like lay on your mat for a while, no one's going to know. So I'm actually feeling really motivated to try some harder stuff, but I just need to take like half an hour this weekend and set up my space. Mm -hmm. 
like figure out on my I have a TV in my bedroom, like figure out how to stream stuff on it because I haven't even bothered to like turn it on yet. Yeah. Um, and get my mat and get all my stuff in place and like have it and then decide when I'm going to do it. And okay. well, I just that haven't sounds taken like that a step. good first step. I will hold you accountable. Like our business coach would say, like, what is the thing you have to do? And when yes. are you going to do it by? And then we're always like, oh, really? I have to, right. I have to like commit to that. <laughs> right. Is that how this works? Okay. So I will check in with you. Okay. By end of the weekend. And I will check in with it. you to see if you're reading anything yet. Okay. Because I know once you start, you're going to finish. Yes. So good deal. All right. Well, thanks everybody for listening. And if you are new to the show, I just want to point you to our special page that's just for you. It's at themomhour.com slash new. And when you're there, you'll see lots of different ways to dive into our archives, which can be intimidating. Um, We've been doing this for five years and we have over 300 episodes. Um, So some people like to binge from the beginning and we have ways to do that. And other people like to hop around by topic. So we've got lots of great options for you. And it's at themomhour.com slash new. Also want to let everyone know that we have more content coming out this week. So just in time for you. So look out for a special three-part mini series later this week on spring cleaning your digital life, which is a great topic for this time of year. It's kind of like when you're trapped on a plane and you, you know, take the opportunity yes. to clean off your desktop. Yes. This is kind of the same, the same concept. So um, this time, you know, Sarah, you're going to be whipping me into shape because I'm, I'm not the best with this stuff. Yeah, this is so satisfying and I'm really excited about this series. So look out for that. We're going to be talking about files and photos and storage and just making the most of your digital life by cleaning it up. So look out for that dropping later this week and we will talk to you soon. 